Okay, uh, for a special occasion, I have to interrupt the video I'm actually recording right now and start a new video here. Well, as you know, two weeks ago, we have calibrated the battery to 3.65 volts with the Victron Smart Shunt. Everything was on 100%, battery was on 100%, Smart Shunt was on 100%, and then I turned off the recalibration for the Smart Shunt. So usually it hits a certain voltage for a certain time, and um, it resets to 100%. It knows the battery is fully charged. I have turned this off because I wanted to see the true state of charge of the battery. So from 100%, we went then down to, all the way down to 9% with our test recently. And then I used the battery for the last two weeks here, charging the vehicle, having other loads, the irrigation pump and all my electrical equipment, you know, from the off-grid garage here, charging, discharging, charging, discharging, all the way through until today. Today is the first time we hit, well, the uh, 3.45 volt, the absorption voltage again, which is um, 50... Um, 55.2, exactly, 55.2. So after we calibrated the shunt, the next day or two days later, we fully charged the battery again and it was at the same value at 99.5 or 6% at 3.45 volts, right? And I said, well, this is now the 99.5% we always get when we charge to this voltage. Most people said the smart shunt is very, very accurate. So even if you charge, discharge, for a long time, the smart shunt will be very precise. A few people said it won't be very precise. There's always a drift. It will accumulate over time and it will be, it will be, it will be out of sync with your battery. And I kind of expected that it will drift, of course, but by how much? That's the interesting part. And I'm currently in this smart shunt here. We are at 55.2 volts holding the voltage there and we are still charging with 2.2 amps but the amps are going down gradually now so we can see from the history it's a it's exactly 16 days ago since we fully charged and calibrated the smart shunt so in theory it should sit on 99.3 or 4 or 5 percent i can't remember actually what the actual number was at this at this um, point of time but we are over 2% down. So the smart shunt shows 2% less energy than two weeks ago. And also it is 7.5 amps. I put this here on the screen, how many ampere hours we had actually left at the point of calibration. I think it was only, no, I need to lie, 1.5 ampere hours or so. I don't know, it was a very small amount of ampere hours, but now 7.5 ampere hours less than two weeks ago. And I also want to show you the deviation here because the balancer in the BMS is completely turned off. I have deactivated the active balancer. Of course, this is not connected anymore. We've got 44, 45 millivolt deviation here. You can see number cell is high, number five is low. It's not the usual six, seven and eight situation anymore. It changes, which is good. But still we have a deviation of 44 millivolts at 3.45 volts per cell. So now after 15, 16 days, we can see we've got 45 millivolt deviation at 3.45 volts. If I would charge higher now, the deviation would even get more. I guess that's why smart people have invented balancing and recalibration for the shunt. So obviously you need to recalibrate the smart shunt. Nothing new, right? I just wanted to see how much drift we actually have in 16 days about two and a half percent well the battery is still charging with about two amps um i'm not sure how long this will stay there until it goes really to zero it should go to zero eventually when the voltage of the battery is the same as the charging voltage right so we are again at the very high state of charge now we have almost fully charged the battery, but the smart shunt is out of sync. And we had some discussions about this under my videos in the last two weeks, actually, then, where people asked this question, why do these cell drift? And this is because of the internal resistance of the batteries, of the single cells. They are not the same. Even the manufacturer claims they're all matched and blah, blah, whatever. They are not. They are not. 
And if you push high current through them, you will have a different heat loss inside these cells. So you're losing maybe 1.5 watts at one cell and only 1.2 watts at the other cell. And over time, this all accumulates and then you have a drift of 98. It just jumped. Then you have a drift of about 2%. And that's why you have to recalibrate your smart shunt from time to time. You can set the parameters inside the smart shunt correctly and it will calibrate automatically every time you hit the 55.2 volts and stay there for a few minutes. The smart shunt will realize that and say, okay, this is my 100% from here out. I recalibrate and then we go down for 100% again. Okay, this was the whole purpose of this test. I just wanted to see how much drift we actually get in this March hunt over a period of two weeks. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, all your donations, all your comments, all your, all your everything. You are amazing, guys. Thank you so much for that. Until the next video, guys, stay charged and safe. And thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye-bye. Okay, back to the other video now. <laughs> Wait, 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 before you go. I'm just editing this video and I listen to myself, you know. So forget about everything I've said before. So the 2 or 2.5% 2 drift of this March hunt may not be true. Remember the video I made about the capacity spread, where I made these graphs showing the state of charge we reach to a certain voltage with a certain current. So we charge the battery from 5 amps to 40 amps to a certain voltage and then measure the capacity we have reached. And we could see from this graph that charging to 3.45 volts is very close together, regardless what current we use. 5 amps brings us 109 ampere hours, while 40 amps brings us only 102 ampere hours. 109 to 102 is 6%. So charging to 3.45 volts can bring us up to 6% difference in the result we get in capacity. Because this test has shown it depends how fast we charge the battery. So I'm not certain it is the smart shunt or it is the internal resistance. It could be the different charging speeds as well. Well, anyway, whatever it is, you have no control about it. And that's why you have to recalibrate your smart shunt or your BMS at some stage. You have to find a defined point of your battery and then tell the smart shunt, this is 100%, go from here. Yeah, I think um, that's the verdict of this whole test now. So um, I'll leave this all with you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the drift is caused by. Error measurement in the smart shunt, drift of the cells because of different internal resistance, or because we charged and discharged with different speeds and get different results. Maybe all of the above.